you're watching the ugly inside subscribe below Welcome to TUI Transfer Talk and as the deadline is fast approaching, it looks Saints deals are becoming a little frantic in the last final few hours of the window. With currently 10 injuries to the squad and are in desperate need of some reinforcements. There's been a number of names that's been bounded about in the last few days and joining me to help digest these reports is Luke from RaceofHampton.com. Welcome back, mate. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. You? Not too bad. I'm hoping for a, a signing or two in the next 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, so am I. It's been a bit of a bit of a strange couple of days. I mean, what with the what with the Arsenal game, which, well, that was awful. And I think that just that only reinforced the need for new signings. I mean, you can clearly see that the squad depth isn't quite there, especially in defence. And at the moment, we've actually only got one fit and available striker. So, it, it, you know... The last sort of week or so has highlighted the need to bring in new players. So let's talk about the first the first one, first of all. Italian forward from Napoli, Manolo Gabbiadini, is set to sign more. Well, it looks like Les Reed is thrashing one out with the Italians right now. Uh, it's reported about £15 to £17 million pounds is, the, is the fee that's been suggested, with add-ons and also a 10% sell-on clause. Uh, Luke has actually re- prepared a wonderful scouting report over on RitaVampton.com. The link to that is down in the description. So, Luke, can you tell us about Manolo Gabbiadini? Who is he? What can he do? And what can he bring to the Saints? Gabbiadini's had a bit of a bit of a tricky time at Napoli this season. Um, new manager Maurizio Sarri has came in and he's implemented a completely new style of play. Now, Gabbiadini struggled to adjust to this, but he's still managed to get three goals this season. A lot of fans are going to look down on that and think, well, three goals this season, we're bringing him in for... What could rise up to 17 million? What are we doing wasting our money? However, the stats are a little bit flawed with him. He's actually got a goal every 170 minutes, which is a goal every two games. And to me, from mainly substitute appearances, I'd say that's a pretty good return. He flourished under Rafa Benitez last season and the season prior to that at Napoli. But it's just the change of system. He just doesn't suit it at all. He doesn't really suit playing as the lone striker. And that could prove to be quite interesting to see where he fits in here. Because I kind of think that he'd be very well suited to playing on maybe the right-hand side of the diamond that we were playing in the first sort of 10 11 games of the season because he's very very good on his left foot whether you're watching him in a in a normal game or whether you're watching a highlight reel I think it's clear to see that he's got an explosive left foot and if he can cut inside off of the right and you know get himself into the position I think that maybe he could be the key to actually getting that diamond to work again and for me actually from what I understand he initially I thought it could be a Graziano Pella replacement but the more I think about it, he's more and more sort of He's more similar to Jay Rodriguez, who has the ability to play anywhere across the front line and play as a centre forward. Yeah, exactly. You're right there. I mean, although Gabbiadini is six foot one, his main his main attribute really isn't his strength. He's good at holding the ball up and he's good at keeping hold of the ball. He's um he's a technical player. He's not really a pillar. He's not gonna win everything in the air, but he will contribute to the build up play and he will probably suit how we play at the moment. As I said, Sarri's Napoli kind of play a bit too fluid football with for him whereas with us I don't want to be detrimental to how we've played but a lot of it's been a bit turgid recently perhaps Gabbiadini will offer that little bit of spark that we need and as you said he's quite similar to Rodriguez in a few senses you know in his physique in the way that he can run at players in the way that he can show attacking quality from coming off um, off of the wide areas. And I think that that could provide maybe that little bit of quality that we need to push on this season. And it seems like a wonderful addition as well. It's exactly what we need because Long and Rodriguez are rotated every single week. j is out to the West Ham game at the time of this recording. And it, hopefully that will take a bit of pressure away from those two. Austin's out to the, to the spring at the very earliest but hopefully Gabby Dino is going to score some goals and help us push up the table ultimately. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's just what we need at the moment because it's been clear to see all season that goals have just been, they've just been, we lack a proper number nine. I know we've got Charlie Austin, but you cannot rely on him to, in this sort of 50 game season to provide you goals. And that's, you know, that's been clear to see. He's got injured and we've looked absolutely lost in goals. And even then, he only got an average of a goal every six games. That just speaks volumes about our our attacking threat. And although I think that the impetus shouldn't be forced strictly on the strikers because the midfield haven't been good enough when it comes to goals, we need that bit of spark. And if Gabbiadini can provide a bit more, bit more quality, a bit more swagger up front, I think that perhaps it would be you know worth the heavy price we're paying. Okay, so in, in other news, then it looks like Claude Puel is set to link up with one of his. His other former players, Moez Hassan. Sorry, French people, if you're watching. Uh, French goalkeeper from Nice. I don't know if I've pronounced that or, or, or what, but I'm not too sure. Let us know in the comments. But it looks like it's a good possibility. 
who could arrive to, for backup for Fraser Forster. Uh, obviously, Alex McCarthy's long-term injury needed surgery. So what do we know of Hassan? Well, Hassan was mainly utilised by Puel in his last season for the first half. Hassan was unfortunate. He's a young keeper and he made a couple of mistakes in the first half of the season. And this led to Puel actually giving a chance to another young keeper at Nice called Johan Cardinal. And it just so happened that he hit a purple patch of form and he's been pretty faultless so far. And of course, with the change of managers at Nice, with Puel coming over to Slampton and then Lucien Favre going over to Nice, Hassan's just fallen down the pecking order a bit. And he's been unfortunate. He's a young goalkeeper. He's low on confidence. And at the moment, he's their third choice keeper. He's behind um, Cardinal and Walter Benitez at Nice. And for a keeper low on confidence, only being 21, 22 years old, it's going to be a bit soul-destroying, given that he was only the first choice at probably this time last season. So perhaps Puel can bring him in, give him a bit of a lift, and you never know. If he gets a chance, he could outshine Forster, for all we know. Yeah, well, that's the thing that I've, I've noticed this season. Obviously, with Alex McCarthy, McCarthy's injury, I think Forster's looked complacent because there's no competition in the squad right now. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. I mean, I think we can all agree on the fact that Force has not been a patch on what he has been in the last um, sort of first half of his first season here and the second half of the last campaign. And exactly as you say, he needs a push. We were all saying last season that we should be bringing in a backup goalkeeper. And that's why when we signed Alex McCarthy, I was actually so happy because he could he could have really, really kicked Forster on and given him that push to reach his heights. But then you look at it now with McCarthy out and Harry Lewis, who's He's just too young. He's too young to compete at the moment. And Stuart Taylor, who realistically you don't want anywhere near the first team, you know, the, the lineup. So perhaps Hassan, who is tried and tested by Puel, can show his quality and he can really push on Forster. So finally, then, reports suggest that Serdar Tasky, I think I pronounced that right, another tricky name to pronounce, 29 year old German centre back. Currently at Spartak Moscow, is out of favour. He's played at Stuttgart, played at Bayern Munich as well, two top clubs in the, in Europe. And he's, he's actually out of con, out of a contract in the summer. This also looks like a good opportunity for us to reinforce the defence uh, with some proven quality and experience, most of all. So this looks like it could be a loan move with a with an option to sign in the summer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Tasky, it's a strange one. It's come out of the blue. But um, as you said, we need experience in that back line. We've got Gardos, Yoshida and Stevens. If you told me that they'd be our only three available centre-backs come the end of January, on the 30, 30th of January, I'd have laughed in your face. But... We don't have Jose Fonte now, so we don't actually have any real proper experience there. And Tasky could provide that. The only thing I worry about with him is that he has actually got a bit of a bad injury record. He's known to have some dodgy Achilles tendons in his left left foot, and he's recently come back from a little knee injury. He only came back at the start of December. And even last season, he was used as a stopgap by Bayern Munich. He only made a few appearances, and that was to sort of settle a defensive a few defensive frailties there so whether he can sort of act as a stopgap for us as we go out and sign a centre-back in the summer I'm not too sure for me personally I know it's been a bit difficult with the circumstance and how late we are into the window I would have preferred to have seen two centre-backs brought in I'd have liked to see one on a permanent deal and one on loan and Tasky being that one on loan I still feel as though we're a little bit light at the back um, depending on how long Virgil is out for if he's out for the quoted three months, then we've done really bad business defensively. However, Puel did come out today and say a few weeks. If it is only a few weeks, I can't really knock the business. It could prove to be a really smart move from us. So I can't really complain. It's only a loan deal. There's low risk. And as you said, if he is good, we can just go ahead and sign him. That's right. And it seems like an exciting talent. Played in some of the best clubs in Europe. But Luke, that's been great. You've done a lot of research there, obviously more than me. Uh, let us know your thoughts in, in the comments below. What you make of the three signings, Gabbiadini, Hassan and Tashki. What do you think make and bring to the squad? Luke, you've been great. Thanks for joining me, mate. Thank you, mate. And uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more. Transfer deadline day is coming and you can head over to Ball Street for all of your alternative deadline day needs. Just in case you're fed up with the colour yellow. All the biggest and best fan channels are going to be there. We're going to make an appearance. They're live on YouTube from 7.30 on Tuesday. All you need to do is just follow the link just on the screen just here and subscribe to Ball Street here.